So we're going to be talking about pharmacologic testing for the Horner syndrome today. So the pharmacologic topical testing for the oculosympathetic pathway, in this case confirming whether or not we have a Horner syndrome, is really important in establishing whether or not we need to have a workup for this. So as you know, the most common presentation is that we have an anisocoria. And that means and not iso same chorea pupil. So we don't have the same size pupil. And because it's a sympathetic nervous system deficit in the Horner syndrome, the anisocoria is going to be greater in the dark because the smaller pupil is not dilating properly. And there's going to be a ptosis. Usually it's only about a one millimeter or two millimeter ptosis and an upside down ptosis. And that's because the Mueller's muscle is in charge of the sympathetic innervation to the lid and it only controls a very little bit of ptosis. So we've got ptosis, meiosis, anisocoria greater than the dark, and we'd like to determine whether this smaller pupil is actually a Horner syndrome. So to do that, we're gonna test the integrity of the sympathetic nervous system, and that means giving a sympathomimetic. So when we give a sympathomimetic, we are activating the sympathetics, and that can be either done indirectly or directly. So we'll start with the indirect acting sympathomimetics that we have available to us. One is topical cocaine, four or 10%, and the other is amphetamine, hydroxyamphetamine. And both hydroxyamphetamine and cocaine are indirect acting sympathomimetics because they don't directly bind to the receptor itself. What they do is at the neuromuscular junction, there's release of norepinephrine, and that release can be stimulated by hydroxyamphetamine, or we can block the reuptake of norepinephrine, and that is cocaine. So cocaine blocks the reuptake of norepinephrine, and hydroxyamphetamine increases the stimulation of norepinephrine. And what that means clinically is if we have a Horner syndrome, we have a block in the sympathetic nervous system pathway. And so if we give cocaine to an eye that's blocked, then blocking the reuptake won't, won't make any difference. And so the anisocoria will be greater because the normal pupil will dilate and the little pupil either won't dilate or will dilate less. And with hydroxyamphetamine, if, if the block is in the third order neuron, this neuron is broken, then giving it the indirect sympathomimetic will not release the norepinephrine because it's broken. And that's a third order neuron. However, because the sympathetic pathway has a first, a second, and a third order neuron from the hypothalamus descending posterior lateral in the brainstem to the ciliospinal center of budge in the spinal cord at the C8T2 level, and then exits white rami as the second order neuron onto the sympathetic chain, internal carotid, intracavernous uh, carotid is going to carry it after the synapse at that superior cervical ganglion. So we have a primary, a secondary, and a third um, order neuron in the sympathetic pathway. And so if the lesion is in the primary, the first or second order neuron, the preganglionic pathway, the ganglion here is the superior cervical ganglion, that if we give hydroxyamphetamine to a pupil that is small because it has a first or second order neuron Horner's, it will dilate because there's nothing wrong with this third order neuron. So this is for confirming the Horner's, that's cocaine. And this is for localizing to the pre or post ganglionic nerve, that's hydroxyamphetamine. And finally, we have aproclonidine. Aproclonidine is a direct acting sympathomimetic. Normally, it has alpha 2 preferential activity, but under conditions of denervation, like a Horner syndrome, we have upregulation of the postsynaptic alpha 1 receptors. And what that will do is Normally, the alpha-1 and the alpha-2 are antagonistic. The alpha-2 is a negative feedback on the alpha-1 pathway. And so normally, if you stimulate the alpha-2, it makes your people constrict. However, if you have alpha-1 upregulation of the postsynaptic receptors from a Horner syndrome, the pupil will dilate, even though that is a direct-acting sympathomimetic on alpha-2 normally. Under denervation conditions, the alpha-1 effect will predominate. And what that will do is it will reverse the anisocoria. The bigger pupil will get either slightly smaller or not change, and the smaller pupil will dilate. So the dilation of the smaller pupil 
after apoclonidine is the endpoint that we're looking at. It's easier to see if it reverses, but if it just dilates this pupil, that's good enough. It'll also make the lid go up, both the upper lid ptosis and the lower lid retract, uh, ptosis will retract and cause a separate endpoint that you can use, which is the uh, apoclonidine will make the lid go up. So in summary, if you see a Horner syndrome, meiosis, anisocoria greater than the dark, ptosis, upside down ptosis, we're going to think about pharmacologic topical testing with either a direct or an indirect sympathomimetic. The direct acting sympathomimetic is alpha-clonidine, which has alpha-2 normal, but under upregulation of, from denervation supersensitivity, alpha-1 predominates. And instead of the pupil constricting, which is alpha-2, it'll dilate alpha-1. And cocaine and hydroxyamphetamine, which are indirect acting sympathomimetics. Cocaine for confirming the diagnosis and hydroxyamphetamine for confirming whether it's a preganglionic or a post-ganglionic corner syndrome.